Well hello again everybody, welcome back and today we have something a little bit different I'm not picking uh, but actually we are going to stick a multi-lock interactive core in this old multi-lock hardened padlock quite a nice padlock, this was sent to me originally by uh, John of Patchy Lock Sport but it had no key there's nothing wrong with that, I managed to pick it so I was going to refurbish it, give it a paint uh, and stick some different pins in it and get it working so the trouble I had was the only multi-lock keys I've got won't actually go in the core the warding is different so that put the kibosh on that idea and just recently I picked up a whole load of multi-lock interactive calls for not a lot of money all work nicely so I thought get one of these in there so not as easy as it sounds uh, at the moment this has got no pins in it so I can open it with a screwdriver and I will show you what the problems are and how I managed to overcome them so there we go we can get it open with a screwdriver and let's strip this down so we get that out of there and out comes the whole core so it's not fully cleaned up yet because I wasn't going to bother until I could sort out a key for it then we've got the cover from over the key then we've got the poles for the shackle and then the core comes out. Now as we can see straight away one of the awkward things with this is that is the body of the lock. We can see all the holes in there etc. That is the Bible and then we have a core. So there is no way this is going to fit in there. So the interactive key doesn't even doesn't fit in there either and with that core we haven't got the interactive uh, element in there the other problem we have is the backs if I just whip this plate off the back because this interactive core is designed for a more modern multi-lock padlock So, as we can see, that is the back in comparison with that. And we've got these two lugs on the back which uh, operate in these slots here to actually move the pulls in and out. So, we're missing those from there and the other thing is if we look on the back of this I'm not going to take this one out just yet uh, but I'll show you in a few minutes we have a groove in the back of this which is missing on these cores and that is for that lump on the Bible which then sits on there and it keeps the core in position like so. So started seeming like it was going to be a bit of a non-starter but let's just put this back together again before I lose bits. I spent a little bit of time on it and get this on Mm. 
one of the other ones I had. That's the key for that one. So here we have a core from one of the other ones. So what I've actually done to this is, as you can see, we have now the groove. I stuck it in my lathe, got the hacksaw and did the groove in the back. And as we can see, that Bible now sits on there just right where that groove should be so that's all intact and then for the pieces for the operating the pole I drilled some holes, tapped them we've now got little grub screws in there uh, which are just the right size as you can see they're lock tighted in place uh, if I was going to do this again, I would use M3, M3.5 grub screws. These are M4s because they're the smallest I had, but they are a fraction large trying to get them in there. And I had a little bit of a job fitting it. But now this core will slip straight into there. This part works. That'll have the spring on there, and as we can see, those grub screws just sit nicely exactly where they should on those two points there. So we should be able to get this now working with an interactive core in it. Now I'll probably go and do this off camera, which is loading the Bible, because as you can imagine, well, I'll start it here, we'll see how it goes. Uh, tweezers. So, we'll stick the key pins in. try and stick the key pins in there we go all the key pins in let's grab a key and make sure they are all where they should be where are we? There we go. So, nice and flush. We'll pull that out. And let's stick that in there for a minute. So, what we have to do with this, starting at the front. Sorry, keep it in camera. Is get the spring in. Uh, I'm going to need a shim of some sort and then we need a driver pin we need to try and hold that in and get that shim on there like so and then the next one Number three, and number four. And 
number five. So this is actually the easiest part. Oh, apart from that. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn the camera off because what we have to do is get that all held together and then get that held on top of there and then get that slotted in there before we're secure. So I shall turn the camera off, get that bit done and then we'll come back. Right then, so sorry about that. I managed to find all the pins eventually after they pinged across the lock shed. As you can see it's in, we ca you can't load this like you traditionally would, even with the separate Bible, because of that groove in the core. You can't get a follower in and do it, so you have to really mess about with it. But we've now got the core in. As we can see, all operating. So, let's put this back together again and make sure it all works. So, we'll start off on the top here. So, this will all come apart again and get properly cleaned up and painted. But like I said, I wasn't going to bother with all of that until I had a key for it. So there we go with that part. Let's get the cover over the and the spring. And get that all back in there. Get the grub screw. Uh, so this is the actual interactive core I picked on camera the other day, so that's why I didn't bother messing about with picking. So there we have the key, and we can see those locking poles, and all the spring-loaded part works. and all working just as it should so there we go an old multi-lock padlock refurbed with a interactive core so i hope you found that interesting thank you for watching and i'll see you all again soon bye